Hello dear students this is Sushma Singh and you are watching Booster Classes students i welcome you back to today's session with a very big heart today we shall be doing the comprehensive study of the first chapter from hornbill book of standard 11 cbsc the name of the lesson is the portrait of a lady by kushwan singh this is a simple but exemplary account of the author's grandmother in this video i am going to give you the core of this chapter in an extremely coherent manner so that you can apprehend with ease its storyline the character traits of the main character we shall also discuss the theme and the symbols used over here finally a few questions will be there for your comprehension check Before moving further let me give you the overview of the story the portrait of a lady is autobiographical in nature because it describes the author's association with his grandmother and several changes that come about in their relationship indeed the story is a loving tribute to his grandmother where he recalls about the deep bond of mutual love trust and friendship shared with her This realistic account is indeed a reminder about a growing distance between the young and the old generation. The author through his portrayal makes his grandmother endearing and unforgettable because the pen picture drawn by him not only does it bring out the physical features but also reflects the intellectual and spiritual beauty of the grandmother. Let's talk about the story now. The author beautifully unfolds his relationship with his grandmother whom he loves from the core of his heart. However, the thought of his grandmother being young and pretty did not appeal to the mind of the author. Kuswan Singh felt that his grandmother could never have been any different from what he had seen her to be. She looked the same terribly old lady for the last 20 years. She seemed to have stopped growing older indeed. Hence to him the fact that she used to play games as a little girl was like one of the myths and the fables that she narrated to him. Now talking about or describing his grandmother's appearance he says that she was short fat and slightly bent in stature she had wrinkled face and silver locks scattered messily on her forehead she hobbled about the house with one hand supporting her waist and the other telling the beads of her rosary his grandmother was not at all attractive but she had an extremely gracious personality she looked extremely beautiful as she was an epitome of serenity contentment and peacefulness her spotless white sari and her silver locks gave her spiritual beauty the author brought out her inner beauty by comparing her to a stretch of a snow covered white mountains now her kindness the way she conducted herself her deep sense of devotion all these made her beautiful and adorable talking about his grandfather's appearance he says that looking at his grandfather's portrait no one can imagine him in his youth he looked as old as he had only and only lots of grandchildren his clothes were loose fitting he wore a big turban and his long white beard covered the best part of his chest The author has divided his long and loving relationship with his grandmother into three important phases and here we shall talk about the first phase of their relationship that is the years of togetherness in his childhood the author lived in the village with his grandmother and as they spent most of their time together they shared a strong and close bonding with each other 
grandmother was his constant companion and caretaker in the village she took excellent care of the smallest of his needs right from waking him up getting him ready for school preparing his breakfast as well as escorting him to school and being a sole guardian and mentor she took keen interest in his studies and also imparted moral values to him when he learned the alphabets in his class she read she used to read scriptures in the temple which was attached to his school on their way back to home they would enjoy feeding stale chapatis to the street dogs now her selfless love her words and actions during this period left indelible imprint on the author's mind and this was nothing but the depth of their relationship well during the second phase of uh, their relationship the friendship started fading now this was because the bond between them started weakening and changed drastically once they shifted to the city although the only thing that remained unchanged was their common bedroom but their close contact diminished and as the years rolled by grandmother's role in bringing up her grandchild was reduced and they saw less of each other now as a matter of fact shifting to the city with his parents caused the turning point in kuswant singh's relationship with his grandmother because now no longer she escorted him to his city school because he went to school by bus and despite sharing same room they did not spend much time together in spite of her immense interest in his studies she could not help him in his assignment because she was not very much aware of the new subjects like english and western science therefore she became withdrawn and began to feel lonely grandmother was highly disappointed and quite perturbed when she learned about the absence of religious instructions in the city school because in her opinion education without values cannot be considered significant teaching of science was not of much importance to her and being a conservative old lady she had her own beliefs she felt offended when uh, she came to know that they taught music at city school she did not approve of his learning music at school to her it is too indecent for those belonging to decent families according to her music can be a profession of beggars and harlots only the period of author's early youth was actually the third phase of their relationship and this he called as snapping of friendship because when author started going to university he was given a separate room in the house as he was grown up and somehow needed privacy now this snapped whatever remained of their friendship and grandmother gradually lost touch with the author however this distancing was not at all deliberate indeed the demand of the situation nevertheless this adversely affected their relationship yet grandmother combats her loneliness because being a lady of strong character and non interfering she accepted every circumstances calmly and changed herself accordingly she did not react on authors going abroad but she lived alone in her room and accepted her loneliness with grace and dignity she remained busy in spinning the wheels reciting prayers and feeding the sparrows in the afternoon and this was the only recreation and rec uh, relaxation time for her indeed it used to be the happiest half an hour of the day for her sparrows also got so used to her affection indeed they became so free with her that they would perch on her shoulders and sat on her head however she never shooed them away here too her patience was beyond any measure let's now find out how did grandmother react when author left for higher studies 
while seeing of her grandchild grandmother did not become sentimental rather she kept herself calm and composed because she had remarkable control on her emotions she was absorbed in telling prayers and silently kissed the author's forehead before he left for abroad now considering her old age the author was unsure if he would be lucky enough to see her again because he was going away for five long years so he thought perhaps her this kissing was the last sign of physical contact between them he loved his grandmother from bottom of his heart so he carried the moist imprints of her lips in his heart when author returned after 5 years grandmother came to the railway station to receive him grandmother was overjoyed at author's coming back home after 5 long years she invited ladies from the neighborhood in the evening in order to celebrate the author's homecoming she overstrained herself by beating the drums and endlessly singing songs related to homecoming of warriors and consequently fell ill she even broke her routine and missed her prayer for the first time that day the vivid description of the last day in the grandmother's life gives a dramatic touch to the whole narration Now, though she suffered from mild fever, she had got a fair idea that her end was approaching. Now, this was nothing but far-sightedness shown by her during her illness. She was distressed that she had neglected her prayer for the first time in her life. Now, behaving very strangely, she gave a clear signal to her family that she was no longer interested in wasting time talking to family members, and so she demanded. that she be left alone to pray and tell her beads in the her last time of her life family members protested for this but she ignored all their protest and she died chanting the name of god with the rosary in her hand now when people are pious and good even nature mourns their death to mourn till her death thousands of sparrows came and sat around her dead body in complete silence they took no notice of the bread crumbs thrown to them by the author's mother silently flew away after the body was carried for the last ritual they thus they expressed their sorrow and paid silent tribute which was the result of her love and affection now here we will talk about the character traits of the author's simple but adorable grandmother the author's grandmother was an epitome of serenity peace love care and affection only a strong person can execute peace and contentment she had boundless love for her grandson she took absolute care of her grandson when he was left in her custody in the village she was graceful and dignified in her bearing she accepted changes with the passage of time very calmly she indeed was a strong person and had perfect control over her emotions she survived for 5 years only to meet her grandson and died a day later after meeting him thus even her death indicated her resilience and strong will power author's grandmother had been portrayed as a religious lady her lips moved constantly non stop in an audible prayer and hands telling the beads of her rosary she read scriptures and visited temples as well she was an animal lover on her way back from school she would feed the street dogs with chapatis and in the city when she could not move out she took to feeding to uh, sparrows the author describes as grandmother as a highly traditional and conservative by nature because she did not approve of his music lessons she never compromised with her principles well it seems that the story the portrait of a lady teaches no moral lesson but a sensitive and intelligent reader 
can understand that apart from learning so many lessons from the life and personality of the author's grandmother, we can also say that the story puts light on the fact that the generation gap is not an unsurpassable gulf. We might grow up and grow apart, but the morals and the principles instilled in us by the older generation refuse to die. They help us develop better insight into our lives by teaching us life lessons like to be organized and disciplined, to have a strong willpower, to be loving and benevolent and so on. It also throws light on the need of companionship and friendship felt by our elders. The story teaches us to accept and manage adverse circumstances of life with patience and tolerance. It also shows how love and emotion is experienced not only by human beings but also by animals and birds. A number of symbols have been used beautifully by the author just to describe his grandmother as a pure, serene and strong person. Now, rosary is a symbol of grandmother's spirituality. It is also a part of her being. Spinning wheel symbolizes the hard working nature of grandmother. It can also be taken as it also symbolizes the self-sufficient nature of grandmother. Finally, dogs and birds provide a refuge to grandmother in her loneliness. So this symbolizes that human beings take refuge in nature when they are disappointed by their fellow beings. I am extremely hopeful that you all must have got the in-depth explanation of this chapter. Now these questions will help you to check your comprehension level. So without fail, give an attempt to solve them and deepen your understanding. Keep watching and get the detailed analysis of other chapters too. And I'm really looking forward to your valuable comments. Thank you for watching the video till the end.